In this episode, we're going to talk about the IT request template from Monday.com. You will find that by opening the navigation bar, clicking Add, choose from Templates, search for IT requests, and you will find that here in the IT Service Desk template. This is the summary of how the template looks like once installed. We already installed it so we don't need to click Use Template for now. You will be able to see that it can be integrated with Jira, Zendesk, Salesforce, Slack, Teams, and Gmail. Now, once we go to the IT Requests board, this is the first thing that you will see. Once you start using the template, you will have the groups here. This is our new requests group, working on a group, and our done group. This is the division of where this exact request is in the process. Let's take a look at one way to receive requests, which is through this form. This is how IT requests would come into your Monday.com board. There are many ways and options to share this form. One of them is by sharing the link that would be here. You can also shorten the URL, so it would look like this. You also have other options such as sharing it through Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WhatsApp. You can embed your form into your website or even simply sharing a QR code. You can also have some other form restrictions right here. Now what's going to happen is that once you receive a submission from this form, you are going to see all of the submissions here. Now let's take this first example. So one IT request I have is I need a new keyword with the description, my previous keyword does not work. As you can see, this request was created on the 30th of October 2022, and it has a low priority. Nobody is currently assigned to this request yet. So this is where you would be able to assign somebody from the team to work on this specific IT request. I'm just going to assign Jess for this request. You will be able to change the status to working on it ordered, waiting for approval, stuck, done, or new. You can also edit the labels and add the labels right here. Let's say, for example, you have one that's delivered and another one that is stuck. Since we already have that, let's just change it to lost. This is where you will be able to change the label. The due date is our deadline. And as you can see, there's a column information here, which you will find with the I symbol. It's recommended to always click this to see exactly what this column is about. This is a deadline combo, and this column is linked with a status column, so it's linked with this one. And this column has reminder notifications. So we will be able to see the notifications right in the Automation Center. Let's say, for example, the due date is October 3rd or 1st. Once we click Done, you can see the check mark here, and we see that it is done on time on October 3rd or 1st. And that is the combo between the status column and the due date column. The question is, how will we know or how will we be able to set which status can be marked as done or is completed? You will be able to do that by clicking the three dots right here. Click Settings, Customize Status Column, and change the settings here. Choose which colors indicate that an item is completed. So, let's say for example, it's only done, or if we say that ordered is also a mark that something has been done, then we can also click that right here. So now we can see that both columns represent that this exact request has been done already or has been completed. So you can also see it once we clicked ordered. Let's click that. Now we can also see the check mark right here. If we go back to working on it, the check mark automatically gets removed. Here is where we can upload or manage all the files that is related to this exact IT request. To add any document or file, we're just going to click add or manage files. We can upload files from our computer, from our webcam. We can add Monday docs. We can add a link. And this is how it would look like if we want to add a link right here. Here you'll be able to paste any type of link, and this would be the name of the document itself. Next, we have our SLA column. 
this is a number column. Let's type 9. This would mean that we would take about 9 hours to work on this. Now it's here where we will see how long it's open. The time tracking feature is widely used in many workflows. This is how the time tracking column looks like. Once you click play, this would start the time tracking feature. You can also pause at any time, then play it again on a later stage. An additional feature in the time tracking column is the ability to edit time tracked and add sessions manually if you want to. You will know that a session has been manually added the numbers are marked in red. Next, we can see here the name of the person who submitted this IT request. In our case, it's Adam Shells. The next field is the requester's email, which can be found here. This is where you will be able to contact the requester himself. We also have the phone number of the requester. In addition, we can also see the department where the requester belongs to. Now, once we click the conversation box, we will be able to write updates here. So this is where we can update either a certain member of our team, everyone on this item, or even everyone on this board. Simply mention whom you want to mention and have them get notified directly once the update is posted. What we can also do in the updates feature in monday.com is to add files, add GIF, add emojis and mention other people. We can also add some checklists here. So for example, we want to do task 1, task 2, and task 3. Once we click update, we will be able to work on this checklist directly from the updates feature of monday.com. We will also be able to see any file that has been added in this exact item in our files view. The activity log is the feature where we will see everything that is happening within this item, like when it has been created, when anything has been changed, etc. Let's take a look at the views. The main table is always the default table in monday.com. This means that this is the table that is unsorted and unfiltered. We will not see any conditional formatting here, any filters, any sorting whatsoever. For short, this is where we will always see the raw data in our monday.com board. The all requests view is the same in this case. Since this is not the main table, we can, however, tweak this table a little bit by adding conditional coloring, filters, and many more. This is how the filtering system in monday.com works. You can switch to quick filters. This is where everything is easier to navigate through, but we can also use advanced filters like this, add multiple filters if we want to, and just click save to this view once we're done with a filter that we want to have. What we can also do is to change the conditional coloring to change the color of the cell however we want to. So let's say for example, we would like to have a yellow cell when the name is problem with the VPN. So as you can see, it automatically colored this exact cell because this is the one that matches to our conditional formatting. If we go to open requests, this will filter our requests in the new requests group. As we can see in this exact view, we do not have any requests right now, but if we would move this to the new request group, then we will be able to see it once we click open requests again. Now we can see the new request that we just moved. Now if we switch to close requests, this is filtered to the group that is done. We have two requests right here, which is problem with a VPN, and I need a new keyword. Let me just edit this. And we can see the rest of the information about the exact IT request once we scroll further. Monday.com has a great feature when it comes to knowing if a task or request has been completed on time. In this example, we know that we finished both of them before the due date. This is why we can see done on time.
The next view is our form. After the form, we can see our workload view. Based on this chart, we can see that Jess is working on three requests. Two of them are done while one of them is waiting for approval. And this is how we will see the status of each assignee right here. When we go to the next view, we will be able to see the status breakdown of all of our requests. So we can see that 67% of them are done, 33% is waiting for approval. This is a very useful chart in order for us to be able to have an overview of how everything is going on with our IT request system. Once we switch to Kanban, we will see all the requests by status in one glance. In addition, we can also adjust how the card should look like. To do that, we're going to click Settings, which can be found at the top right corner, and click All Columns. Then we would be able to see everything right here. If that is not necessary, then we can just deselect what we don't want to see and simply select the description and the assignee. I don't think the status is really necessary because this is automatically the status that this exact request belongs to. So what we could also see here would be the due date. Now what's really special about Monday.com is that you can change the items or update them in whichever view you are in. You can change something in the Kanban view and it would automatically update in all of the other views as well. Let's say for example that this exact request is already done. So what we would just do is to drag and drop that to this view right here. And once we go to the main table, we know that this is also done. So now we have three requests done or completed. This is the complete tutorial on how to use the IT request board. It's truly very easy to use, very straightforward, and also very informative. I hope this was helpful. If you're ready to use this workflow, you can start your free trial with Monday.com by clicking the free trial link. We're Mindflows, a certified Monday.com partner. Thank you.